G'day viewers, it's Michael here again and welcome back to Single Racer. And today I have the second of my subscriber requests, this time by a person that goes by the name of Simon Olsen. And so here is his comment here in which he goes into detail about explaining that he's ridden bikes for 40 years but he's not as an experienced sim racer and he uh, has adopted a kind of style that fits the riding of his bike to how he approaches, ironically the same as myself, slow in fast down. But also ironically was the fact that when I prepared this video and then went to, shall we say, screen grab his comment, I realised <laughs> that I read the comment wrong and I assumed he wanted to see uh, me do a Nordschleifer lap but in the Lotus 49 whereas actually what I realized he meant was he wanted me to do a lap on the Nordschleifer 67 GP the old version of Nordschleifer in the Lotus 49 but lucky for me I have uh, one of the older sim racing friends a channel by the name of Steen that used to race in the extra mile Sunday sub showdowns and he did a lap on that track and it was kind of his own channel challenge like uh, similar to what I have and so I attempted that so luckily I already have that uh, hot lap in the bag and I'll put a link to that uh, underneath the video for Simon Olsen and other people to check out if you want to but I thought I would instead do something slightly different. So this is a typical single racer hot lap, but I wanted a different approach based around the actual subscriber request. And so what I thought I would do over this hot lap replay is talk at length about how I try and drive the Lotus 49 uh, faster. Now, admittedly, I'm not an alien, but I can uh, drive it quite quickly and um, I notice other people have trouble with how to drive this car because of the kind of unique way it handles. So I thought I would go into a bit more detail and that is using the technique of slow in fast out but more so about how I brake with the car. And so just for those people that have no interest in the tutorial side of this section of the video, I'll have a timestamp uh, in the description below if you just want to jump to the VR hot lap uh, just to skip this, this portion of the video. But for other people that are interested, it's amazing that this car handles like a car I've been featuring lately, which was the Auto Union Type C, where all the weight is in the back so the car tends to act a bit like a pendulum you know it, it, it is quite easy like the Porsches also where the engine is in the back to just act like a pendulum and suddenly you find yourself spun around and so on that basis I thought I would talk a bit more at length here over just the standard external replay because I won't have time or able to talk quick enough for the crucial corners in the actual hot lap itself so it's basically understanding two techniques that I've kind of put together. And the first one is based around the unfortunate thing that here in Australia we've got so much uh, open area or country and bushland as you might have heard with the unfortunate fires that we've been having in Australia lately. But um, a lot of people unfortunately get into the trouble where they go too fast and they lose the car and what they try and do is correct a slide they get into and the more they correct in the opposite direction the more it acts like a pendulum and unfortunately often uh, ends up in a, in a really bad way in an accident. And so given that the Lotus 49 is very prone to this uh, sliding or, or pendulum effect and getting out of control, I thought I would describe two things that I do that help me make it much easier to drive this car faster. And so if we look at a picture here that is just a representation of say many corners of Nordschleife or another track, you can see the curved nature of this particular section of the photo 
And so what I tend to do to try and be faster in this car is, and I know this sounds a bit silly, but it's the only way I could explain it, is make, maybe I micro turn, meaning that I try and limit how much I'm turning in the actual car, uh, unless I really, really have to based on the corner. But if you look at this image here, is I try and even break up the corners or the curves into their own straight line so to, to make the car as straight as possible to minimize that actual um, pendulum effect but the other thing i do that i want to go into a bit more detail uh, to try and keep the car as steady as possible is the way i brake so i do have the technique automatically regardless of slow in fast out but what i try and specifically do in the lotus 49 is, um, and I know this is common sense, but uh, I'm, I'm referring to what happens after I do it, which is to break in a straight line. But even that split into a fork or a different technique for each purpose. So what I mean is I'll break in a straight line and uh, the initial reaction then is that you have a settled and stable car. And from there, I break into the corner having a already stable car. But the other technique is where I brake early also again in a straight line, but this time the purpose of doing that is to pick up the throttle early. And what happens is as you brake, you have all the weight of the car as, does, as it's braking moving forward. So what I found was, if you trail brake in this car and do that, that's when you most likely spin because you're lifting all the weight as you're braking off the back wheels. So if you're trying to trail brake, or in other words, brake as you turn into the corner, the, the lifting of the weight off the back wheels is what tends to make it add to the pendulum effect much, much more easily. So what I tend to do is, uh, and use the slow in fast out as part of that technique is brake in a straight line then the car lead, leans forward lifts the weight off the back wheels but then what I do is in a straight line is then re-pick up the throttle so in other words I, I'm almost braking earlier deliberately slower than I need to then I pick up the throttle which lifts the front end back onto the rear wheels and makes it stable again and then use the power of the throttle to pull me out of or through the corner with the weight on the back wheels to make the car more stable. And so the whole reason for explaining this now is I just wouldn't get enough time in the hot lap itself to talk about the weight shift and now I can just focus on pointing it out when I, when I actually do it in the hot lap. So as we let this replay end, uh, let's head over to the hot lap now. So this is Michael signing out for Single Racer. I'll catch you next time. See you later and let's go hot lapping. Okay folks, so as we get ready for the hot lap, the first thing I want to talk about is the first corner after the start finish line. Because I deliberately run out wide, which makes uh, not much sense really because you feel like you're traveling a further distance. But here's why I have an advantage over a lot of people, in that I deliberately run out wide to make then a micro turn in a sense. So turning here and then making it as straight a line as possible and what I notice is because in winter I race this track so much online is that I pull away from other people because they have to brake much much harder uh, into that corner now here brake in a straight line turn then brake in a straight line again and then turn and that's how I manage to uh, balance the car or make the car as stable as possible to avoid that pendulum effect. Now another tip I have here is after this long straight you fly up the hill and there's a little runoff like a driveway uh, that's on the left hand side and again this is, goes against intuition but I actually aim for this 
here and what it does is it seems to put pressure on the spring and get full grip on the left tyre and I seem to be able to then turn and get much better grip than if you come at it at a pure straight line. Now here's a great example again, break in a straight line and try and straighten this, see a straight and then turn and it seems to make the car much more stable. Now here's just a flow with the corners, nothing I can do about this. I kind of have to uh, accept that, but it's a great example of what I was saying between the two different types of braking. So here's another example. I brake in a straight line, but then keep easing off, see, and that way the car has the balance on all four tyres, the weight. And same again here, just let it turn, give it a little boost, and then let it turn again, and now take off. And this is where I get that slow in fast out speed from. I need to do this again here because I actually had a crash in practice here where I didn't ease off. See, let the car turn and now accelerate. Break in a straight line, let the car turn and now accelerate. And that's where I get all speed from over a, say, someone like a beginner. But it also means I'm not an alien. You know, I've I probably would have to learn how to trail brake much better to be an alien driver in this or any other car. But to get that initial speed where you get used to it, here's another great example. So brake in the straight line before I turn, then I turn, brake in the straight line again and then ease off, no acceleration and let the car turn, then I pull the car out of the turn by putting all the weight on the back wheels. Same again here, straight line, make it as straight line as possible, then accelerate. Straight line, brake, let it turn, then accelerate. And, and that lifts the weight onto the back wheels and gets me that full power out of the corner for my slow and fast out technique anyway. Here I actually like to come behind the corner. I kind of come out wide and then tighten this bit to get the straight as long as possible and as much speed going down this particular straight as possible. I love the corner at the end of this long straight. It's a, one of those things that I've gotten that you really got to know the track really well to get the experience. And there's a little like um, a guttering on the complete right hand side and I use all the room here so I look for that guttering, run over it and then try and maximize that speed because again coming out of the corners on these long straights you want as much speed coming out of the corner as possible. Now here's two where you just can't help it, you have to almost trail brake in a sense or just you know turn and just try and keep it under control as you saw there and here's a funny one it's like I, I, I fall into this uh, carousel but it's like two left and then one to straighten two left and then one to straighten it's a very weird kind of corner in in my approach but here's a great example of that picture that I showed you of the curves where I try and make break in a straight line try and make that straight break in a straight line and try and make as much of these corners as, as straight. See, I aim straight and then turn. And it's those micro turns that stop the, the rear end from kind of pendulum out and spinning you around. Uh, run over this and run over this curb here. And I love all this. This is my, I'm running a, uh, my Monza 66 uh, setup, which allows me to get up to 300 kilometers an hour in the gearing but here it's a very tall second gear so I go through this whole section in second gear just easing off and trying to keep the car stable always braking in that straight line so again here and then let the car turn no very little acceleration and now power it down in those micro kind of turns Here's a very important one, brake before the hill, fall down the hill, then turn. And, and it slows you up enough to get the balance of the car as you hit the bottom of that um, bitumen on the road again after you jump over the hill. Same kind of thing here. And it's just those very gentle kind of corners, trying to keep the car as straight as possible. 
he took me ages to learn this corner, but same kind of thing, always just breaking in a straight line and then using the momentum of the car or the stable car to turn. Again, falling in this, even though it's a, a, a much less aggressive carousel, it's the same kind of thing of just falling into it. Now here's the great example of, of just trying to set up this corner. So easing off and then just letting the car turn and then applying the throttle to try and get as much power up this hill. Now even though my gearing is for 300 kilometers an hour, I won't reach that because of the nature of the hill just slows you down too much. As I try and just get it as close as I can to 300, Help, will I hit 297? Just, just 297, but the hill is just slowing you down too much. And then, uh, but here's a great example of the second part where I brake, but then pick up the accelerator. So I brake, and now I pick up the accelerator to get the, the weight on the back wheels to actually get the grip again to pull me through these corners. And uh, I love first corner in this, just let it turn. And let's see, what time do I get as we cross the start-finish line? Okay, a 7.12. So, as we pull her up here, let's see on, uh, as we get settled down, let's see on um, RSR. Now, I'm running the um, Humble George Single Racer Special Edition livery, but it has no effect on the car because I'm uh, running an official RSR time. So now, let's see where I finished in that RSR time. Okay folks, so let's see the official time on the RSR app. So it's a 7.12.9 in 43rd spot. Now, I did muck up a few of the first corners, so I'm almost 100% sure I could get into the top 40. Uh, which is great for this car, it's not an easy car to drive, so I'm very happy uh, with a top 40 if I really uh, applied myself given the restriction of the heat at the moment. And just one final bit of housekeeping is why do I always pan in the video at the end to show the hot lap instead of recording it live and it's two things together it's because uh, I am totally aware that when I talk with the VR on my jaw seems to affect the VR and it goes up and down and I know that viewers hate a shaky VR anyway so what I do is I I, I use a clapperboard type of effect and I um, splice out the video using a proper replay of the actual race and that way I can hold the VR very very steady and hopefully it's much easier to watch so that's that's why I do it and just uh, use the footage at the end to show my my RSR score so I hope you enjoyed the video give it a go if it appeals to you so this is Michael signing out for Single Racer I'll catch you next time see you later